Welcome back to segment number three of electro, practical electroacupuncture. In this segment, we're going to go through the Pantheon unit and its controls, and then we'll look at some of the other um, units that are on the market that you may have uh, and show you how the controls match up, and then how to use these controls, what they do in, in, in some detail. So let's start out here with this first uh, slide. Um, you can see this is the front panel of a typical Pantheon unit. This is the 8C Pro. Um, it features um, a timer, which the other units don't have. These diagrams I'm going to show you are also in your notes, so you'll be able to pick them out of there and, uh, and refer to them later. But you can see what the, the, uh, the basic uh, controls on the front panel, the intensity knobs across the top. We're going to keep referring to these. The intensity knobs are very important. The uh, mode control knob, which on the Pantheon is also the on-off switch and the battery test control. Um, there's a timer there on the right in the middle. Um, and then there's uh, on the bottom there are two frequency controls, one for continuous and one's marked mixed. Uh, and they are used in different ways that we'll go into later. The back panel of the Pantheon, you can see, um, has uh, uh, a, a two rows of jacks uh, that you plug in the, uh, the leads to. Uh, the top row is for when you're doing milliamp or millicurrent uh, treatments. Um, these are the stronger treatments. These are the jacks you would plug into. The bottom row is for microcurrent or microamp. Um, so if you're doing a milder treatment, or a specific type of treatment that would use microcurrent, you would use those jacks. Um, and then there's a clip lead test jack, which we'll go into later how that's used. And then up the top, you see there's a, a label, there's two little pins sticking up that say output tester, and we'll also talk about how the output tester is used. These are features that are only on the Pantheon, uh, the output test and the clip lead test. I don't believe any other uh, machine we're gonna look at today has either of those features. But let's take a look. Here's just some other diagrams again. These are in your notes. Um, and you will see that there are, uh, this is the uh, Little Edo, the, I, the uh, IC1107. Uh, also, the newer version is called the uh, ES130. This is the uh, kind of the flagship of the Edo line. It started out way back in the early 80s. This was the first uh, electroacupuncture unit that was uh, authorized by the FDA, um, and it was given the, the substantially equivalent status by the FDA back, way back in, back in the day. Um, it is kind of deceptively simple, but uh, it's, it's uh, less simple than it looks, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. I want to show you this on camera, kind of how, how it works and uh, what some of these, these controls do. This is the ES-160. This is another Edo device, a newer one. And again, I've, I've got this basically in your notes, so you'll have a good diagram of what the various controls do in case you have one of these. Um, and you can match up what these controls do to what I'm going to talk about with the Pantheons. It has um, the intensity controls across the top. The mode controls are controlled by a button. And uh, then you have some various uh, readouts, digital readouts here in these little windows at the bottom. Power switch is on the left. Um, this is the Helio device, which um, is no longer on the market, but some of you may have it anyway. I wanted to show it to you, and I, you know, there's various reasons. I'm, I'm not sure why this has been taken off the market, but it has. Uh, I discovered a couple of problems with them, but uh, I, I really like the design and the uh, idea behind it. I hope they will rethink it and eventually come out with another one. Uh, this is a picture of the AWQ-104B. There's also an AWQ-104L, uh, which I'm going to be demonstrating, and uh, they have, they're very similar. They, the only difference is the 104L has a digital readout. Uh, this one does not. But you can see here the uh, basic controls, again, are pretty much very similar, uh, with the exception of it has this, uh, these AWQ machines have something called a polarity switch, uh, which is a little uh, confusing because, as you know, all the modern machines are biphasic. They're bipolar. They do not, you can't change uh, 
I mean, you can't go just one direction with them. You, you're always going both directions. So uh, wondering what this polarity switch means uh, is a little hard to figure out because the notes that come with the uh, device don't really explain this very well. I believe, however, what it does is it reverses the waveform. And we talked about waveform. There's a square wave on the positive side, and then there's a negative spike. And this is typical of all electroacupuncture devices. I believe what this does, it allows you to reverse the direction of the waveform, not the actual polarity. Um, so I think that's the main, the main difference here. I think that's what it's doing. So that spike, the, the negative side, tends to get a little bit more of a punch when that comes through because it is a spike. Um, and so it, by reversing it, you've got the needles attached and the person is feeling one side, but they're not feeling the other side. You can you could reverse the polarity, but before you reverse the polarity, you should actually turn the machine down, reverse the polarity switch, and then turn it back up again. Um, I, I don't know how useful this is. I've not worked with these machines very much because I don't trust them, and so I don't have a lot of experience with how to use that polarity switch. My guess is it's not that useful, although some people might, might like that feature. This is a newer version of the AWQ. Um, again, and this one you'll see it does not have the polarity switch. Uh, and so the controls tend to be a little bit more mm, uh, uh, conventional and more like what we're going to see on some of the other machines. And this is the KWD 808 machine. And uh, again, this is a very, this is an old machine. It's been around a long time. It's uh, in use at a lot of clinics. They're very heavy duty. They're made. Uh, they're very substantially made, so they tend to be, they tend to last a long time. Um, and they, uh, you'll see these in China, you'll see these in hospitals and clinics. And you may see some here in the, in the States as well. So let's talk about the controls. I'm going to kind of go through these briefly on the slides, but then we'll show you on the machines exactly what they do. Um, the first control on the Pantheon is that to get really familiar with is the one that's going to be on the left hand side in kind of in the middle of your machine and that's called the uh, mode control. This uh, is kind of the master control for the Pantheon. Um, it sets the mode or modulation uh, which is the way the frequencies are delivered. Uh, it is um, it also turns the machine on and off so as soon as you turn it to either continuous, discontinuous or mixed the machine is on. Um, the power is on. It also allows you to do a manual battery test, which we'll talk about later. Um, I'm not going to go into all of this right now. Okay, here's the, the second control I want to talk about. This is the minute timer. This is only on two of the Pantheons, the 8C Pro and the 12C Pro. It's a minute timer. It allows you to time the treatment. You can set it for 10, 20, 30, 10 minute increments, up to 40 minutes. Um, and you can, it'll shut the machine off at the end of the treatment and it'll, there'll be a, an audible beep. Um, I don't, I don't find it very useful personally if it had a readout that told you where in the treatment you were. Um, it would be much more useful. I usually set it just beyond the 40, um, on this control, there's a blank. There's nothing there, but there is another click stop there. And on the newer machines, um, on some of them, they have a little infinity sign in that location, and that allows you to put it into continuous operation. So the machine's just on, and uh, the timer is not functioning, basically, at that point. Like I said, I don't find this very useful, um, and I just usually leave it in the infinity position if I'm using a machine that has a timer. Then there are the frequency controls. There are two of these. Uh, the, these are important. The, the, the continuous frequency uh, knob controls the frequency when you are using the continuous mode. It also controls the frequency when you're using the discontinuous mode. So both of those modes are controlled, the frequency is controlled with this knob. So you can set it, you know, at any of these increments from 0.5 hertz up to 200 hertz. Um, if you're using mixed mode, 
the continuous frequency knob sets the lower of the two frequencies that you're going to be using. So if you're using, say, um, uh, 2 and 100 hertz, you would set the 2 on the continuous knob, and then you'd set the 100 on the mixed knob, which is where we'll go next. The mixed frequency control is only used when you're doing mixed frequency. Um, so if you're using continuous or discontinuous, this this control is not functioning. Um, you can I usually just leave it at whatever frequency I commonly use for mixed mode, uh, whatever higher frequency I commonly use, um, and then I can uh, it's ready to go. Um, what happens with both of these um, is that uh, in in mixed mode and in discontinuous mode. Uh, there's a change every three seconds. So you have three seconds with discontinuous. You have the machine is on for three seconds, delivering whatever frequency you've set for discontinuous, and then it's off for three seconds. And similarly, in mixed mode, it is on one frequency for three seconds, and then it's on the other frequency for three seconds. So it, it switches back and forth between the two frequencies. The intensity knobs, these are also very important. This is where you're turning up the actual stimulation that's going to the patient. Um, and you can vary the stimulation. You can turn it up and it make it the intensity higher, the amperage goes up. Um, so, you know, you want to be careful about these knobs um, in the Pantheon units and in most of the units now. Uh, if one of these is left on and you turn the machine on, the machine will give you an error message and it will, won't function. That's to protect you from the possibility of shocking your patient. So you always want to leave these in the zero position, the off position. That prevents that particular error from happening. The machine comes on and then you turn on the intensity knob later. Each of these regulates one channel. So the first one on the left there regulates channel one. Second one, channel two, channel three, channel four. If you have a six channel machine, it's uh, similar to that. And you can see they're set from zero to six. Um, zero setting is off. And there, with the Pantheon, there's a little click. And then as you go up, the frequency increases. In the milliamp range, you're going from zero up to 25 milliamps. Um, so it gets, the increments go up pretty quickly and you have to be very careful in the milli, milliamp uh, mode. If you're turning it up, turn it up very slowly. Microamp, it goes from zero to 600 microamps. And remember that one microamp or, or 1,000 microamps is equivalent to one milliamp. So that 600 is like six tenths of one milliamp. Um, so it goes up very slowly. You don't have to you don't have to turn it up as as slowly. You can go up a little bit faster. Although I find a lot of patients at around three around the, the three setting, which is probably about 300 uh, microamps, they are feeling something, and uh, sometimes it's a pretty subtle feeling. But I always stop there, and I'll we'll go into why that is with microamps later. And then there's a TIN switch, and this is on the side of the, um, the 4C, the 8C, the 6C Pro, and some of the other units we're going to show you will have a, a switch for TINS acupuncture. Uh, sometimes it says high-low on some of the other uh, devices. It will say high and low, and basically you want to stay in the low range or in the acupuncture range for delivering electroacupuncture when you're connecting to needles. Because when you connect to needles, of course, the, uh, the, the skin resistance goes way down, so people will feel the current a lot faster. So you don't need as strong a waveform or as much intensity when you're using that. And with, with the Pantheon devices, what happens when you switch to uh, the, TINS, um, uh, the TINS setting is you get this second waveform, which has, as you can see, a much stronger negative spike. So it's delivering more voltage in that negative spike to punch it through and get that stimulation through the skin to break through the skin resistance. Electroacupuncture, you're not worried about skin resistance. That's been taken care of largely by putting a needle in. 
and by the fact that you're probably into an acupuncture point which has lower resistance. So if, if the needle is properly placed, you don't need to worry about the skin resistance and you don't need to have the big, as big a spike. What would happen if you had your uh, machine set on tins and you did electroacupuncture um, with a patient, they would feel it a lot faster and maybe it would be uncomfortable to them. So you want to make sure this, this little switch is in the correct position for what you're doing. If you're doing acupuncture, make sure it's in the acupuncture setting. If you're doing tins with pads or probes, put it back into the, uh, the, the tin setting. This is just a little diagram I created for the various lights on the front of the uh, Pantheon device. I will go over these uh, with a device in a minute and show you how they work and when they would come on. But this gives you a kind of a quick, uh, easy to read uh, little, little um, diagram that tells you what the lights mean. There is a pulse light um, and this pulses whenever the machine is on. And it, tell, and it lets you know that the machine is on and that uh, current is being delivered. Um, there are also two lights next to each of the frequency controls. Um, so next to the continuous and the mixed, and they just tell you which one is active. So if you're only using continuous, only the continuous light is going to flash. It will flash kind of in time with the frequency you've set. Um, if you're using mixed mode, both lights will come on. One will come on for a while, then the other one will come on. So it lets you know whether, you're, whether the lower or the higher frequency you've set are being delivered. The output jacks, this is on the back panel of the uh, machine. You can see their output jacks, the milliamp and the microamp. And we've, this is pretty self-evident. You plug into whichever one you're wanting to do. You have, they each have a separate control knob. Uh, so channel, uh, channel one on here, as you can see, the milli, there's a milliamp channel one and a microamp channel one. They're both controlled by the, um, by the uh, channel one intensity control. Now, people will ask, can you use both milliamp and, channel one and microamp channel one at the same time. No, you cannot. You need to choose. Uh, if you're using one or the other, that's what you want to do. It will not work if you do both. So there are some safety features, and I'm going to go over these in some, some detail, but just briefly, um, they prevent accidental shock, as I mentioned earlier. If you turn on the machine and uh, you get a, the diagnostic light flashes red and you hear it beeping, something's wrong, probably intensity knob is still turned on. So you need to turn the machine off, make sure all the intensity knobs are turned off. I'm going to talk a bit about this. This is what I recommend that you have in your electroacupuncture kit. Uh, and I will show you uh, one of these uh, when we start out here in a minute too. But um, your device, your wires, a plastic box is really useful. Uh, protects against spills, protects the machine. You can actually clean the box. Don't keep your machine in the cardboard box it came in. It looks tacky and it's going to get dirty and you won't be able to clean it. Um, if you spill something on it, that, that box is going to be ruined and your machine may be ruined. Get a nice plastic little shoe box or something and um, Target, Walgreens, Walmart, you know, wherever hardware store uh, you can find these little plastic storage boxes and get one of those that your machine and all the equipment you have with it will fit into. This will help protect it. It looks more professional and uh, you will, it'll, it'll work better in your clinic or if you're traveling around with your machine. You need to have your instructions in there. You need to have your extra batteries, um, uh, an external battery tester, some tape to tape down the leads, um, and then any other accessories you may want to have like the facial stem probes that I'm showing here, tins pads if you use tins, um, you know, extra clip leads um, if you want to have some a backup set of clip leads, it's a good place to keep them as well. Then there's battery tests, there's a couple of these and I think rather than go through these I'm going to switch over to the other camera and just show you some of these things.
Let's take a look at some of these electroacupuncture devices. This one is the old, uh, this is an old Pantheon that I've had for many years, probably 15 years. Um, it's the um, 4C, it's the original Pantheon device. Um, I think this was at the time the only one they made. It's four channels. It does only millicurrent. Um, it does the, uh, the three modes, continuous, discontinuous, mixed. Had the battery test, um, TENS acupuncture switch, and the clip lead test. So very early on, they were having some of these other features. Um, uh, however, did not have the channel output test. Um, thing still works, and it's, so uh, I don't use it anymore, but I keep it in the uh, archives. <laughs> Here's the newer uh, version of the Pantheon. This is a 6C Pro. And this is a typical Pantheon layout. Uh, you can see that it has the intensity knobs across the top, the mode knob, which is also the off on switch, and the battery um, test is on the side here. And then you have the continuous and discontinuous knobs. Um, so um, on the back, we have the, the top row is your channels uh, for millicurrent, the bottom row for microcurrent clip lead test jack, and then the output test pins here. On the side is the TENS acupuncture switch, which is now in the acupuncture position. Eight c Pro. Uh, this is a little bit bigger version of the Pantheon. It simply adds um, a timer. In this case, it has the infinity mark, which puts the timer into continuous operation. So basically deactivates the timer. Um, and the machine, when you turn it on, it just stays on until you turn it off. Otherwise, you could set it to uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes. And after the, the duration of that time, it would turn itself off. Um, the other la the controls are exactly the same. Uh, the only difference with this one is it has two more microcurrent channels on the back. Uh, so that with four microcurrent and four millicurrent, uh, hence 8C or 8-channel eight 8C uh, Pro. And this is kind of the top of the line for uh, Pantheon's um, electroacupuncture devices. This is the 12C Pro. Uh, now this unit has 12 channels. It adds uh, two more microcurrent channels and two more millicurrent channels. So it has six of each. Um, and then, of course, the clip lead test. The front panel here is very similar to the other units. Intensity knobs on the top, the on-off uh, mode control with the battery test is here on the right. The uh, timer, in this case, the timer does not have the infinity mark, so, but there is a click stop past 40 that you can turn it to, and that is the same as infinity on the other unit. And then the two frequency controls. One difference is the, 8, or the 12C Pro does not have the TENS acupuncture switch on the side. These machines are made simply for doing electroacupuncture. They are not designed to do uh, TENS, and they won't do TENS. So they don't have that other waveform. Uh, hence the name PINS, percutaneous electroacupuncture uh, nerve stimulator. Um, that's all they do is electroacupuncture, or PINS. I'm going to go back and show you the, um, just back to the 6C Pro here. I want to show you all the different tests you can do. Uh, so for battery tests, when you turn the machine on, it automatically does a battery test. Um, and we'll, we'll just turn it on here. And you'll see there's a slight delay before the lights start flashing. That's because it's running an internal automatic battery test. And once the light's fla flashing, it's checked the battery, determined the battery's OK, and it's uh, starting to deliver current. The other thing you can do is a manual battery test. So you turn this mode control knob all the way to bat test or battery test. And you wait a few minutes or a few seconds. And then the light comes on, the diagnostic light comes on. It's green now. That means the battery's good. If the battery were bad or low, it would come on red. If there were no power at all, the batteries were completely dead, you would get no lights coming on. 
in the automatic mode, it's the same thing. If you turn this on, rather than these lights just starting to flash, uh, if it were low battery, the, the, this diagnostic light would come on red, and that would tell you that the battery's low and you should not do the treatment. Um, so that's the battery test. The other thing I want to say about battery tests is sometimes with these units, um, you could have one good battery and one bad battery. In those cases, all of the internal battery tests, the automatic and manual, would probably tell you the batteries were good because one is good and it would fool the machine. But then if you start the treatment, you'll find that a minute or so into the treatment, the diagnostic light has come on red and the treatment has stopped. The reason for that is because one battery is good, one's bad. It's the only time I find that the internal battery test doesn't work. In that case, you need to have an external battery tester. Um, and you can get these at places like Radio Shack, hardware stores, some drug stores even. Uh, in the battery department, they may have these. They're cheap. They're only about five bucks or less. Uh, so you can just hook up your battery, and you can get a little readout here that tells you there that the battery is good. Um, if the battery were bad, it would be at the low end of that green or in the yellow. Um, if it were dead, it wouldn't even go at all. It would, you would get nothing like, like that. So there it tells you that's a good battery. I recommend having one of these. I keep one in my uh, electroacupuncture kit just um, to be able to check batteries. I also keep some spare batteries uh, just in case. The other thing about um, next to the batteries, batteries can go bad. The other thing that goes bad occasionally are the clip leads. And the clip leads, as you can see, these are pretty thin pieces of wire. Um, and so it's easy for them to get stress, stressed and then you develop a short. And the short could be either, it's usually at one end or the other near the connectors or near the uh, clips themselves. Um, and since the wires are so thin, it's sometimes uh, hard to tell uh, that there's actually a problem until you find that you know, you're turning up the, um, the power and the patient doesn't feel anything and you see nothing. So these machines allow you to do a clip lead test. So again, you take this jack, you plug it into the clip test jack on the back. It's the only time you use the clip test. Turn the machine on. Wait for the lights to begin flashing. And then you test the two clip leads by touching them together. Now in this case, I think this has a short. If I play around with it, yeah, you can see it comes on and then it goes off. That's because there's a short on one end or the other of this uh, clip lead. So this one's not coming on. The diagnostic light's not lighting up. And that tells me that this is a bad pair of leads. Now I'll show you a good pair just to see the difference. Plug it into the clip lead test. Touch the two ends together. Hmm. Another bad pair. <laughs> Let's try one more. James has to edit. Okay. Let's see if this one's good. Plug that one in. Take the two, um, the two clip leads. Touch them together. And there you can see the light is nice, bright green. That means this is a good clip lead as opposed to the red one I was just toast testing. It didn't come on at all. So that's how you test the clip leads. The other test that uh, this allows uh, is for a rarer consequence. And that is if you've, you've been giving the treatment, you test the clip leads, they're good. And then you wonder, well, maybe there's something wrong with that channel. You were using channel two maybe, and channel two didn't deliver any current you can actually test channel two. So you, in this case, you plug in to channel two, taking your clip leads that you know are good, you attach them to these two little pins at the top of the unit.
and then you turn the machine on, and then you turn on channel two. And what should happen is you turn it up, is you see the diagnostic light is flashing green. This means that channel two is good. It's working as it should. If it were not flashing, um, that would mean that there's something wrong with channel two. Okay. And then the built-in safety feature that comes with all the Pantheons that would keep you from shocking your patient. The, the way you could do that, and some of the older machines don't have this feature, you could leave one of these intensity knobs on. You hook everything up, you get the patient hooked up to the, with the needles, and then you turn on the machine. With the Pantheon, the machine will not come on. This red light comes on and it tells you that the machine's not functioning and you've made an error, operator error. So in that case, you just simply turn this knob off, turn the machine off, and then start over. Turn it back on, and then you should be able then to turn the intensity up without a problem. If you've left it on, though, it won't work. And some of the other machines have this feature now as well. So let's take a look at some of these other devices here. This is the, um, the little Edo, we call this, the IC1107. The new version of this is the ES130. It's basically an identical machine with simply a cosmetic change of a new a color on the faceplate, a new cover, color for the plastic body. As you can see, it's about the size of a pack of cigarettes or a transistor radio. It's, these were the original uh, FDA-approved, um, uh, substantially equivalent to a TINS unit. These were the original FDA-approved uh, electroacupuncture devices. They seem to be very simple because there are so, so few controls compared to the other machines. However, um, that simplicity is deceptive because there are, some, there are frequently operator errors that happen with these that are so common. These, are the, um, these three knobs here control the intensity to the three channels. This machine only does continuous, so there's no mode knob to select anything other than continuous. That's all it does. There's a frequency switch here that goes low, medium, and high, and then there's a frequency control knob here that goes from S through 10, um, and it's a sort of a smooth flow, it's, and there's no click stops. To set the frequency on this device, you have to first set low, medium, or high, you have to look, read off this little uh, table here. What is low if you're on the two setting? It's not two hertz. On low, it's 1.3 hertz. On medium, two would be 23 hertz. And then on high, uh, two would be 170 hertz. So you can see that the, the frequency switch here is very important to understand uh, because you get different frequencies depending on uh, where you've set this switch. The other thing about this is when you're setting the frequency, as you can see, there's a little, um, this, this scrolls around, it's the numbers you set in that little window, and it's a little bit, you know, you're eyeballing it. And so it's difficult for people to get that number exactly at, say, four, if you're trying to do four hertz. Um, uh, arriving at exactly four is, is very difficult. You can get close, but it's, it's difficult to get it precisely. That's one of the reasons on the Niemzow test, uh, he did not recommend this device because it was difficult to set it properly. Um, a lot of people use these, they last forever. This one's been around probably for 20 years and um, they still work and they do just fine. Um, this one on the back, I'm gonna show you it has a uh, high low, and this is where you set low for acupuncture, high for electro or for uh, tens. So you can use these for tens or acupuncture. These also have a battery test feature. So you can you turn on one of the channels, and then you push this little button, and the green light comes on to tell you that the battery is good. Um, so they they have a few nice, sophisticated features in a very small device, but it's difficult to be precise with these. I don't recommend them for that reason. 
people and they take a proprietary um, jack uh, for their uh, clip leads. So if one of your clip leads goes bad or breaks, you're going to have to buy a new one from Edo or from one of their representatives. This is the, um, the other Edo device. This is the ES160, the new big Edo device. These have been out since about, I think about 2005 or so that these first came out. Um, very beautifully designed. I think it's won some design awards. Again, it only does uh, millicurrent. It does not do microcurrent, but it offers various modal modes. So you've got continuous, you've got, uh, they call it burst. It's the same as discontinuous. Uh, it's got surge, um, it's got fast slow, which is the same as mixed frequency. So it's got some other uh, modes. It's, it's got the three modes of the Pantheon plus a couple of extra ones. Um, the two extra ones are surge and sweep, which also mix different frequencies. And then it has programmed modes that you can uh, program yourself, and I think there are actually some built-in programs. The off-on switch is over here, this orange button turns the machine on. There's a frequency setting here that can go up and down with these arrows and there's a readout. Um, on the, on the uh, right side here, there's a, a timer, which again, it's a digit. This is a much more useful timer than the Pantheon. Uh, it has a, uh, arrows to set it up and down and then you have a readout to tell you where you are in the uh, treatment. And then there's, uh, this is the, the pulse duration switch, which tells you how long the pulse duration is. In this case, it's set for 250 nanoseconds, very short pulse duration. Most machines are preset to 250 nanoseconds. I think the Pantheons are all set there. Why you would want to change this, I'm not sure, but this machine does allow you to change it. On the bottom, there's a switch to turn the speaker on and off. Uh, this, these uh, buttons here allow you to store things in memory and retrieve them in the programmed mode. There is a battery test here that you, when you push it, it tells you, in this case, the battery is full. So the batteries are good in this one. Intensity knobs across the top. It does have a, um, um, in this setting here, for um, point detection, and it detects the electrical resistance of the points and you can do treatment through that using the Ryota Raku system, um, which this machine is designed for. And then here are the output jacks. And again, it has a proprietary jack, which is different from the Little Edo proprietary jack. Uh, so you can't interchange them. You have to have the one that's specific to this machine. Um, so, you know, again, if you break one, you're, you're, uh, you're going to have to buy an, a new one from Edo or from their representatives. On the side here is a high-low switch, which uh, lets it go from uh, low for acupuncture to high for tins. Nice machine. They're kind of expensive. They're about $700 now, I think, uh, seven or eight. And, um, but they work well, and they, they go forever. This machine is the Helio device um, that I mentioned in the lecture. And this is, um, Helio is a great company and they've come out with some nice things. They had an old electroacupuncture device that was one of the original devices that everybody used. Uh, that's no longer on the market. They tried to come out with these and they've had production problems with them. Um, and, you know, they've taken them off the market now. But some of you may have this. I have one. Uh, I like the design. There, it was a very ambitious design. It took some elements of the, uh, the ES160 Edo machine and some elements of the Pantheon and kind of combined them. Design-wise, it looks more like the Edo, but it also has microcurrent, which is more like uh, what you see in the um, Pantheon. So it has both millicurrent and microcurrent, and it has some of the same features as the Edo. It has all the same moda modes available. Um, and they are accessed the same way. It also has some programming that you can store here and retrieve. Um, it has the ability over here to change the waveform, and pretty much you're not going to want to do that unless you're going to want to let the machine do that for you because you want a certain waveform for um, 
microcurrent or millicurrent or for tins or um, uh, uh, acupuncture. So you pretty much leave that where it is. Uh, this machine does not have a high-low uh, switch for tins and ac electroacupuncture. The battery uh, readout is right here. It tells you, shows you that the battery is full. Uh, there's a timer, again, a digital timer, which is more useful. These two channels on this side, uh, this is where you would turn up the intensity. You set the frequency with these arrows, and, um, on this, and the same on this side. These are the intensity knobs, and you set the frequency with the arrows, and um, it goes through here. What you'll notice about that is these two are millicurrent or microcurrent, and these two are millicurrent or microcurrent. So you could do two millicurrent over here and two microcurrent over here, um, and so you could be doing both millicurrent and microcurrent at the same time, much like you could do with the Pantheon devices. Um, but this machine does have some problems, and I've discovered on this one that if you do make an error, uh, it's, it's, you have to, it, you, it doesn't correct itself. So if I leave one of these on and I turn it on, you get the error mo mode, which is correct. It should tell you that there's a, you've made a mistake, but when you turn it off, it doesn't go off. And when you push this button, it, again, it doesn't go off. Um, so I try pushing a lot of buttons, nothing happens. The only way to get that little beep to stop is to turn the machine over, take out a battery. <laughs> so I think that's probably one of the design problems they had with this device. Again, ambitious device, but some problems with implementation, and now it's now off the market. Um, but if you didn't make that mistake, or if you knew how to correct it, it, it probably works fine otherwise. The other th innovation they had was this little way of controlling your, your uh, clip leads with the little reel. Um, I like that idea, although it does limit the length of the reel, um, or the length of the leads, um, but it, it keeps them from being tangled up, which we'll get to that in a minute. Chinese device, this, the, the AQWs, these are AWQ104L. These have been around for a while. Um, there's various uh, iterations of this machine. Some don't have the um, little digital readout here, some do. Um, these are the Chinese machines that are very cheap, usually $100 or $200 or less, um, but they have a lot of problems. And in Niemzow's test, these machines did not do very well. And I'll show you some of the features here. Here's the on-off switch, um, so it's on there. Um, then here we have the um, high-low, which is where you would choose uh, for TINs or electroacupuncture. It has a frequency boost here, so it goes from 1 to 10. So 1, this would be lower frequency, and then 10 would be boosting it by 10 times. There are two frequency control knobs. As far as I can tell, the way you get uh, continuous, discontinuous, and mixed on this machine is by setting these knobs. If you leave the second knob, uh, the one they call dis, if you leave that at zero, you are getting only, and you only turn up this one knob, you get continuous frequency at this, at the hertz you've set. And you can see there's a digital readout of the hertz. If you wanted to set say the, the lower frequency here to see if we can get it to two. As you can see, I've set it on two, what I thought was two, now it's four, now it's three, now it's four. So it's not very precise. And then if you set the second frequency, you start to get a mixed mixture between two different frequencies. But if you observe the little readout, those frequencies are really jumping around. And this is what Niemzow said about this device. Uh, you could not rely on the frequencies um, to be doing what you wanted to do. Um, it has a, uh, the four intensity knobs are here, and, uh, and then it has these polarity switches, which basically just reverse the waveforms, so in the negative spike becomes a positive spike. This machine does not have the kind of safety features we saw in the others. If you have 
the intensity knob turned on, you've got it hooked up to your patient, ready to start the treatment, and you turn it on, it just starts the treatment. There is no safety feature there to prevent you from shocking your patient. And this is why a lot of people don't like this machine. And even uh, if you do everything right, you will sometimes get shocked, your patient. And I've heard of practitioners actually shocking themselves with these machines. So I don't recommend these. Uh, they're cheap. Uh, a lot of people have them. Some people have had good luck with them, and it probably just is luck of the draw if you got a good production run of them and they turned out to be work well and you didn't make any mistakes that you needed the machine to help you with. Um, that would be fine. Then we come to the KWD-8082. And there are various iterations of this machine out there, too. Most of them are KWD-808 something. Um, this one, great wall brand, uh, very common in China. Uh, it, it has a heftier feel. It's more like a medical instrument, a uh, little bit heavier construction. Case is, is heavier. The components are heavier. However, it has some issues. Um, uh, one of the things that I find interesting about it, if I turn it on here, um, so you select the mode here with these buttons, uh, and let's just pick, um, this is the continuous mode. This light comes on here, and you think, well, maybe that's giving you a readout of something, but really it's just a little LED to tell you you're in that mode, um, why it needs these big um, button or lights to tell you that is kind of a mystery, um, but it's something that they did. Uh, you can see it's it's flashing at a at a frequency that's been set, um, and then if you turn it up, it flashes faster. Um, these are the intensity knobs with the corresponding jacks here on the bottom. Uh, this is the second frequency. So if you were using it in um, let's say dense dispersed mode, is what they call mixed. Then you have two frequencies, and it goes back and forth between those two. Um, you can see the, it's flashing really fast, and then it's coming on continuously for, for the second frequency. Okay. Turn that off. Um, and then this machine does have a battery test, and what this one does is when you push the button, you get a readout here. So you can see it, the battery is good. All right. These machines also have, come with an adapter. You can plug them into the wall, but that's a little scary to me because you got to trust that the transformer is really ramping that voltage and amperage down uh, for uh, proper treatment. And um, you know, I just I'm not sure I trust would trust one of these machines either. Okay. The other thing about the Chinese machines, the other thing about the Chinese machines. Um, that I find a little bit um, troublesome and worrisome is that in China, there are not good copyright and uh, patent laws, and they're not well enforced. So a lot of times, you find knockoffs of machines. So even if you found a, a good brand from China, um, you might find that it's actually been, it's a knockoff of, of a good brand. Um, so you can't really always know that you're getting what it says on the box you're getting. Uh, the Great Wall brand has been around a long time, but I know there are knockoffs of the KWD that are on the market, and probably of the AQW as well, um, even though it's not as reputable a machine. There, and there are lots of other uh, cheaper machines out there that are from China. I don't really recommend any of them. It's not because I'm prejudiced against China. I just don't know enough about them and the testing that goes on with them um, to, to know that I can recommend them. I know the Edo machines are good. I know the Pantheon machines are good. Those are the ones I recommend to people right now. Okay, should we do the wires? Sure. Okay. Let me get them set up here. Is that going to be something that happens here or down there? Uh, it's kind of going to be, okay. it's going to need a little bit more room. All right. Boy, this, this can tangle so fast. It's not working so well. Get out of here. All 
right. Okay, let's talk about wire management, how to manage your clip leads. Um, so the question is, what do you do with these things to keep them from getting tangled up? Um, if you're in a clinic office where you're there all the time, I recommend attach a hook to the wall and then just hang them up. Uh, let them hang. This is the least stressful way to store your wires. Um, it puts no tension on any part of the wire. and um, will preserve them much longer than other methods. Another method is to bundle them up like this person. Now, this is a little bit tight for my comfort because this kink, to tuck this one in, you know, that, that's where you might get, cause a short eventually by bundling up like that. So here's the way I would do that if you, if you want to do it that way. You wrap it loosely around your hand and then you wrap again fairly loosely around the bunch and then tuck it through. Now, I didn't wrap it quite as tightly as this one. This would be less likely, but this is just not the best method. So, what are the other methods? Wrap it up, as we did, but don't tuck anything through. Use a little twisty. Now, these come, I think you get these in hardware stores and sporting goods stores, and you can just wrap that around the wire and let that hold the wire. That is, puts much less stress on any part of the wire. Um, another method that I like um, are these little um, Velcro ties. That These are made for wires. And again, it's just a ta this one just attaches to the wire, which keeps it handy because you don't have to look for it. Um, and then you're just wrapping the wire up like we did before. And then just using the little Velcro strap uh, to wrap around the wire and create a little bundle. But one of my colleagues loves earbud holders. So we have these now. Um, this is probably the most expensive way to store your wires, but it probably is actually the safest. Um, you just tuck the clips in. You wrap the wire around it. You tuck the jack in, you turn it back around, and you've got your wires stored neatly. Now, the impressive thing you can do with this, part of the, part of the magic of treatment, it pulls out, it's completely untangled. So that's one of the nice things about that. The earbud holders are about nine or 10 bucks, I think. So I don't know that I can recommend these just because of the expense. I prefer the little Velcro ties. Um, they don't take up as much room either. All right, that's clip leads. Okay, those are the machines. Gives you an idea of the various controls you're gonna be looking at and the uh, features of those controls and the features of the different machines. You can see the Pantheons have by far the, um, the most um, versatile controls and the most versatile tests and ways of checking things. Um, you can really check out um, you know, your clip leads, your battery, your output channels. You've got a safety feature to prevent you from shocking the patient. There's a lot of really good features built in on the Pantheons. The other thing I want to say about batteries here uh, on this slide is you don't want to operate these machines when the batteries are low. Um, what Niemzow found in his tests was that if the batteries were low and you were operating the machines, you started to get deterioration of both frequency and waveform. So it's not something you want to, because then you don't know what you're doing anymore. Um, so you don't want to ha have that happen. Having low batteries is the same as having a, a, a cheap machine that doesn't work very well. Um, so you want to replace batteries if you're in doubt. That's why I always recommend that you keep some extra batteries around. The Pantheon machines use two 9-volt batteries. Um, 
There's a little door here on the back. Take them off, and you can see the batteries are there. Um, this machine here, someone's actually put a little piece of um, a little sticky note on there and written the date that they replaced those batteries. The other thing you can do is with a Sharpie is you can write on, if you had, I don't have a Sharpie, but if you have a Sharpie, you can write on uh, the batteries, the date. I think that's a good practice um, to write on the batteries and, and record the date that you actually put them in the machine. Uh, the other thing about these 9 volts is you want to make sure when you're putting them in that you get the um, the, the correct um, polarity here. This is the, the positive side and this snaps on and if you if you put it in backwards and you turn the machine on you risk damaging the machine so you want to make sure you put them in the right way. It's pretty hard to put them in the wrong way but it is possible if you try hard enough. We talked about the clip leads and just here's the notes about that and the clip lead test, um, the output test. Good safety habits. When you're using these machines, make sure the device is off when you finish. Turn the main control to off. Turn all the intensity knobs to off. Leave, get in the practice of just doing that at the end of each session. You don't really need to to change the frequency settings. You can leave them at frequencies that you commonly use. You don't need to zero them out. Um, but the, the mode knob and the intensity knobs should all be turned off at the end of each session. Now let's talk about cautions, contraindications for electroacupuncture. I think this is already in the other. I think this is in part four, James. So we don't need to do this. Good. We're done. Hooray. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Sorry. I have to edit this a little bit. Actually, I think I talk about the good safety habits at the beginning of part four. So we can cut this right before that. But let's put this in. People have asked me over the years if there are any good books about electroacupuncture. Um, whenever I do the seminar, people want to know about that. This is the only book I could recommend at all. And it's called Electroacupuncture, a Practical Manual and Resource. It's by David F. Mayer. Uh, it's from Churchill Livingstone. This was published, I'm trying to remember, in the late um, 2007. So it's, um, you know, about seven, eight years ago. And this is a very thorough book. It kind of encyclopedic. It actually comes with a separate CD-ROM with lots of reference material and research. Um, of course, it's somewhat dated now. But this book is probably the... Um, the best resource that I've found uh, for electroacupuncture. It's quite expensive. I can't remember. It's around 100 bucks, I think. Um, I keep threatening to write a new book, which is much simpler and more about treatment. Uh, this book goes into everything. He defines electroacupuncture more broadly. He looks at every aspect, lasers, uh, microcurrent, millicurrent, all kinds of devices. Um, He's, he's in England, so he's looking at stuff that's not available even in the United States. So um, I, I recommend it with some hesitancy. I would say if you're really into this and you have to have a reference, this would be a book to get. Otherwise, uh, you could actually just go on PubMed and online and look at research that's there, and you could find plenty of good references on electro treatments. Um, and someday I may write the book, uh, The Simplified... <laughs> practical electroacupuncture book that needs to be out there for students and for practitioners. Um, but this book is, is good and I, I have used it myself quite a bit. Okay, that's that. <laughs> All right, let's see. I want to do something um, to wrap up. Okay. 
So thank you for um, participating in this electroacupuncture online class. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. I welcome your feedback. You can get in touch with me through um, Northwestern Health Science University. Um, the web, uh, the email address will be uh, on your, in your notes and um, uh, in the uh, one of the slides we'll show you here. And if you have questions, uh, please send them as well, or critiques or you know suggestions for how we could do this better or other classes that you would like to have. I would like to do more advanced treatments and um, and put that out there, but um, kind of wait to see what the response to this class will be. Um, again, thank you and um, hope you enjoyed the class.